This is an HD0 VRX, and it might just be dead. Today I'm going to show you how to find out, and maybe, just maybe, how to save it. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and this dead VRX comes to the channel courtesy of one of my wonderful patrons, Sweet Willie. Thanks, Sean, for sending me all of the stuff to play with. And part of what he sent me to play with was his actual personal HD0 VRX. Unfortunately, somehow in the mail, this VRX got messed up, and when I went to power it on, all I got was a black screen. I checked further and got no red power light on top either. I hear the fan running, but I don't get any video, and I don't appear to have any power. Now, this is a problem that I've seen quite a few times on the HD0 Facebook page, and today we're going to explore the ways which you can troubleshoot it. And in fact, I'm just going to troubleshoot it as we go, and hopefully by the end of this video, we have a working VRX. We're going to start by using the process laid out in the manual for the VRX from HD0's webpage. But first, let me take this over to the bench and show you what the behavior looks like, so you can identify this in your VRX. And just a reminder, this is the HD0 VRX. This is not the SharkBite VRX. They are two different things. And when we're talking about all of the flashing we're going to do here in a few minutes after I show you the behavior, just keep in mind, this is all for the HD0 VRX, not for the SharkBite VRX. The firmware I'll be picking will all be for this model specifically. Do not flash it to your SharkBite VRX. All right, over to the bench we go, and I'll show you what it looks like when uh, you may have a dead VRX. So this VRX did not appear to have any physical damage when I pulled it out of the box. Everything looks good on it. Uh, and I went to power it up and I got just a black screen in the goggles. So let's go ahead and power this thing up. The fan comes on. I can feel the fan running. Um, but I get no red power light. There's supposed to be a red power light here. That's, that's not good. So... Definitely have a problem with this VRX. Uh, like I said, we're going to go ahead and do the flashing procedure laid out in the manual just to see if we can get it back to life doing that. Um, so now that you've seen what the dead VRX looks like, basically no video out of the HDMI and no power light up here. Uh, let's head over to the computer and talk about how we set up for the flashing process. So if we take a look at the VRX manual over here, you can see that there is a steps to flush VRX in case of not booting up. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. It requires seven steps. There is a physical switch that we're going to have to manipulate here. But if we read the process, and you can pause this video to take a look at it, or you can head over to HD0's download page and look at the VRX manual yourself. Uh, the first thing to do is actually to go get some firmware. So we're going to get some firmware and put it on an SD card in order to prepare for the physical switch and the flashing. So get out your SD card, plug it into the computer, and let's go get it. Firmware is again found on the download page of HD0, and the firmware we're going to get is the newest, uh, the Rev 1106 2022. So we're just going to download this zip here, and I'm going to put it in a random place. It, uh, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to open this thing up. Let me pull this screen over, and you can see inside of this firmware package there are a bunch of zip files. So we want to be careful about the one that we use. You can see that there's SharkBite VRX 2 SMA and HD0 VRX 4 SMA. We're going to be using the HD0 VRX 4 SMA because this is the HD0 VRX and not the original SharkBite VRX with the built-in patches. You can see the SMA counts are what they're using to differentiate it, and this does have 4 SMAs. So we're going to open this zip file inside of the other zip file. We're going to open VRX 4. And then we're going to drag over our SD card. So this is the SD card contents of the SD card for my VRX. I'm going to copy everything from in here. And I'm just going to paste it over here onto the root of the SD card. If it asks you to replace the files, just replace the files in destination. No big deal. And once you've got all that done, you'll want to go to the bottom right on your Windows PC. Right-click the USB and make sure to eject the drive so you do not corrupt this SD card. Once we have that ejected, we're going to take it out of the computer and we're going to head back over to the goggles to continue the process. So the first step is going to be to insert our SD card since we just put the firmware in question on it. And then we're going to start manipulating a physical switch. And you can kind of see it in there. If I hold it just right, there is a switch inside of the VRX right there. And when the VRX is in normal operation, the switch is in the up position, pushed this way. 
but we're going to do an emergency boot, which means that we need to bring the switch down this way. So you can get in there with a very thin pair of tweezers and manipulate that switch. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and pull the four screws out so we can see the whole back. Give me one second to do that. So now that I've got the back off the VRX, you can see the switch a little bit better. Like I said, you can do this with the slot, but just so you can see it, I took the back off. Uh, it's in the up position right now. I'm trying to get some good light on it. It's in the up position here. In order to do this, we're going to want to move it to the down position to put it into the emergency bootloader mode. The next thing we're going to do is power the VRX on through the power plug. Do make sure you have your SD card inserted. What we'll be looking for is a solid red light over here. Then the red light will turn off after approximately five minutes or so. It will stay off for about 10 seconds and then the red light will come back on. And what we're going to do is wait for it to come on, go off, come back on, and go off again. And after it's gone off for the second time, we'll unplug the VRX and see if we get any different results out of it after we put the switch back. But for now, we're going to go ahead and power it on with the switch in the down state and the SD card loaded with firmware. And we're going to wait for the light to go on, off, back on again, and then off again before we take the power out. And while we're waiting on our VRX to potentially come back to life, if this video has been helpful, be sure to give it a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. We're growing. I really appreciate everybody out there encouraging the channel to grow and helping and commenting and becoming part of a little corner of the community where we all love bacon. Because I love bacon. I don't just name myself Bacon Ninja for the fun of it. I really enjoy it. I enjoy a good slice of crispy bacon. In the comments below, please let me know if you prefer your bacon crispy or floppy. If you prefer it floppy, I don't know that I'll reply. Because crispy bacon is the best, and that's just a fact. Anyway, the red light is on. It has not gone off yet. But when it does, we'll come back, and we'll see if this VRX has come back to life. Keep your fingers crossed. All right, as you can see, the light is now off for the second time. So we're going to disconnect power from the VRX. Wait for that fan to stop. And then we are going to slide the switch back into the top position. And then we're going to boot the VRX and hope and keep our fingers crossed that we see a red light on the top. We should see a red light here if the VRX is going to power up. Uh, doesn't look like it's going to do it. Looks like our VRX is... Still in trouble. If your VRX powers up and the light comes on, then you're good to go. Looks like we are going to have a little more work to do, though. Well, the VRX is definitely more dead than just a recovery flash. There's one more thing we can do, though. Before we toss it in the trash and chalk our losses up to shipping hazards or whatever mystery may have happened to this VRX... There's one more thing, and that is that there are actually two boards inside this VRX, and they're sandwiched together with a connector. I was talking to Ryan Quellett about the issues that I was having with this, and he mentioned that it's possible to open it up at your own risk. Remember, this is very much at your own risk. You can damage the VRX in this process, but you can open it up, take the boards out, make sure that they are seated properly together, put them back in, and then try again and hopefully it will work. I'm thinking that maybe the jostling of shipping disconnected the connector between the two boards, so I'm hoping that is the case here. But let's go back to the bench and let's dig a little further. Again, I'm gonna remind you, this is completely at your own risk. You are tearing into this VRX. It will be easy to break something while you are in here, and it is a very complicated and sandwiched electronic device. But I'm a semi-expert, so let's get to the bench and let's, let's try it. See where we can go. I obviously already have the back case off, so I'm gonna step ahead, but if you do not have your back case off, remove the four screws and pop the back case off from the top here to reveal the back board. We'll also want to make sure that we have the SD card removed from the VRX before we begin the process. And according to Ryan, the VRX boards will come out from the bottom or the IO side, and they'll kind of twist out about the SMAs on the top. We need to be careful not to mess up the jog wheel though as we pull them out. So let me just poke around here and see what I can get for getting these boards 
loose. I'm going to kind of take a pair of tweezers in the I.O. down here and right here on the edge of this board. I'm just going to kind of gently nudge it out as best I can while also trying to keep an eye on where that jog wheel is. I'm going to use all of the available openings that I can find to maybe get a little bit of leverage on moving the board up because uh, I kind of want it to spin around the SMAs since they are right there at the top. All right, we're getting somewhere. That board is its on its way. Kind of spin it around if we push on these SMAs and pull on those SMAs. Kind of spin this thing around and get it out a little easier. And then we can kind of grab it like this. Be careful of the jog wheel. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do a little, little, do a little more push and pull on the SMA jacks here. There we go. The SMAs are definitely what's keeping everything in place. All right, uh, SMAs. There we go. And we've got it out. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the fan. And uh, yeah, there is the board. And again. The connector is completely disconnected inside this board. All right. That connector there, in fact, I think I can separate these two for you pretty easily. Let me, let me see what I can do. And now that we have the board, you can see the connector in here. This connector lines up with that port, uh, and it just kind of comes disconnected in there. Fought a little hard on my mat here. So let's just make sure that connector is well seated. All right, and uh, the power the power light should be right here. So what I'm actually going to do now is since I've seated those, uh, we're going to test and see if uh, the power light will come on real quickly before I reassemble it. Uh, so let me get my battery. As you can see, I get a red light there and a green light on the front, and that is a good sign. That means this VRX should be working now. So... I'm gonna put it all back together here, and we're gonna start by putting the fan connector on, which goes pins up, and it's kind of fiddly to get in there. You may have to, you may have to do some finagling with the case to get that in a place that it works. It pins up there, all right, and push it in, and then we're just gonna flip it around, and we're gonna very carefully line up the SMAs with the holes they go into. And then we're gonna make sure that this jog wheel is lined up as we press down and in to get this in place. Maybe pull a little on the SMAs there and then it should fall right into place for us. There we go. The VTX is, or VRX is back together. Now that it's back in the case, let's power it on one more time. All right, so we've got a red light on the top here a green light I can see through there. Let's go plug it into HDMI and uh, see if she works now. Cross your fingers, because if not, that's the last time your VRX is ever going to have power at all and be useful. So keep your fingers crossed. Maybe we've saved this one. Let's go plug it in and see. Look at that. HD Zero logo. The VRX is back to life. There we go. There's our VRX. All right, so in the end, we were able to repair this HD Zero VRX. It was a little more complicated than the standard procedure of just doing the boot fix. We did have to completely disassemble it and reattach the boards to each other. For some reason, they might jostle around and that connector in there is very fragile uh, and they just become disconnected. Uh, thanks, Ryan, for the heads up on that. And uh, yeah, thank you, Sean, for letting me tear open your VRX and get her all back to working. Surprisingly, we got it going. So make sure to double check that before you chuck it in the bin. If you're comfortable opening your VRX, if you don't want to just send it in for repair, uh, which can take a long time. I've had a VRX in for repair for almost four months now. Uh, so if you don't want to send it in, potentially to China, uh, if the U.S. center is busy, then you might try this. 
Now, it is, again, at your own risk. Be very, very careful. It is very easy to damage all of the internals of these boards. So, at your own risk. But, we saved a VRX today. I feel accomplished. Let me know in the comments below if you try this or if you tried this before or if just the regular uh, flash recovery procedure works for you that's listed in the manual. Let me know what your experience is with that. Let me know if you've had an HD0 VRX do this before because this is the first one I've had have that happen. So anyway, thanks for sticking in there. Sorry this video was so long. It was kind of complicated um, and it was a little bit nail biting because for a while there I wasn't sure if we were actually going to be able to save this thing. But turns out, in the end, we did. Anyway, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. I'd really appreciate it. And give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. And until next time, I'll catch you later.